now I have the privilege of introducing our next speaker, Donna Body. Um, Donna is the owner of Delos Incorporated, which is an award-winning agency based in the Philadelphia area. Donna and her team help her clients grow their businesses using their online presence. Delos provides digital marketing strategy, training, and implementation, and develops websites designed to attract more clients, get better leads, and grow revenue. We love those things. Donna frequently speaks to business organizations on how to make the web work for them, writes articles on delosinc.com website, and has been working with WordPress for over 10 years, which is amazing. She's also a WordCamp speaker and organizer, and she also enjoys hanging with her family, the outdoors, hiking with her dog, and Italian wine. Hello, Donna. I also Hi, love Hannah. Wine, and I love all those things, so we <laughs> should be friends. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks for being here today. I'm excited. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to talk to everyone about yeah. getting better results from their website. Yes, amazing. I'm I'm sure that everyone would love to hear how to do that. So I'm super excited. Well, Donna, I'm just going to turn it over to you at the end. If we have questions, I'll hop back on and um, so feel free if you're listening to ask questions, leave them in the chat and we'll just hold on to those and save them for the end. Um, and Donna, if you need anything along the way, just holler and I'll, I'll be here. So great. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think I can no. see the chat right now. So that's awesome. Well, thank you um, for having me. I'm so excited to be here to present to you to talk about using your website to attract the right customers because you've got a great looking website. It's um, beautifully designed. Cadence does a wonderful job with the great templates and things like that. But why is nobody coming to your website and buying from you? So that's what we're going to go through a bunch of little tips today on uh, how to get that happening. And um, I just feel like one of the reasons that we have to uh, compete in this world. I don't know if you feel like this, but we are bombarded with messages all day long. So the challenge for us is how do we break through that noise and get people to pay attention to what we are offering? And so what I'd like to do today is to give you a whole bunch of different tips and tricks that will help you in that way. And hopefully they're going to be actionable things that you can do. Some of it you may have already covered, which is great and wonderful. Some of it are going to be some new things that are going to be something to uh, help you move forward. If there's anything, I'm going to kind of give you a preview of, you know, the end in mind is that what I want you to do is to take a fresh look at your website through the eyes of your ideal customer, because they're the ones that are going to come to you and purchase from you or sign up for whatever you're offering. So uh, with that said, it's really important that we start with the right foundation. And there's two aspects of the right foundation. There is the technical aspect of your website, and then there is the marketing aspect of the website. So in the technical aspect, and I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on the technical aspects, but I do want to mention a few basics here because you can have the greatest content and messaging in the world, but if people don't find it usable or Google doesn't index it, it's not going to help you. So I'm looking at what does Google want? And why do I say Google? Well, they're the largest search engine, but also let's look at the business that they are in. They make their money primarily from advertising. So they want your eyeball so they can show you ads, but you won't go to their site if they don't provide you with the information that you're looking for and it's not a good experience. So the technical factors relate more to the experience of the website than your content. And you could say that there's really three key things that Google is looking for there. They have a lot more technical terms from, for it, but basically uh, mobile usability is so important because there is more traffic today 
on mobile devices than on desktop devices. And the mobile experience is really important. So that means things like, you know, do I have to pinch and zoom? Are my links so close together that the resolution of my finger hits three of them at one time? Or maybe you've had this experience. You're in the middle of reading an article and the page just jumps somewhere else. And so, you know, that's, uh, the, a, a shift, a layout shift, and, and Google penalizes those things in what they're looking at. So mobile experience is so important because that's how your customers are finding you for the most part. We have a number of clients whose sites are like 80, 85% mobile traffic. So you really wanna optimize for mobile and especially speed on mobile because what happens when it takes too long to load a site? We hit the back button and we go look for somewhere else. Um, I'm sure you might have done that as well. Um, your potential customers are doing that too. And Google's data shows this. So speed, especially on mobile, is a big technical consideration. You know, it's a few years old now, but Amazon did a study that found for every 100 milliseconds of latency or delay that they lost 1% in sales. And Google's research also found that a half a second increase in page load time increases the bounce rate by 20%. So we want people to stay on our site. And then the third big area is security. That's making sure that you have that lock icon, you're using SSL, that you're keeping WordPress and your plugins up to date and that you're not vulnerable for malware. So Google measures some of these things, cause it calling what core web vitals, and I'm not really gonna get into the technical details of that, but I do have a quick few technical tips for you in making sure that your website hits these things. The first one is fast, reliable hosting, because cheap hosting can actually be really expensive if it costs you business because people don't come there. So fast, reliable hosting is important lightweight, secure themes and plugins uh, is also important because these can have a major impact on speed and also reliability. Now, fortunately, Cadence is a great choice in this area as they take the speed and the security really seriously and they are lightweight and performant in their products. So I do uh, like to use them in that regard. Um, you also wanna be selective in the amount of plugins that you add. Just because you can add a plugin doesn't mean you should. They slow down the site oftentimes, and if they're not well-coded, they can be a security risk. So we have an audit service that we run um, for people to look at best practices, and uh, we often find that people have multiple plugins that do the same exact thing. They have plugins installed that they're not even using. Um, they're not kept up to date, and I think one of the records that we had um, going is a uh, site had 59 plugins in it and that one site took over 40 seconds to just load the home page. And so that was problematic because people were hitting the back button left and right. Nobody wants to wait that long to find out the hours of your business, for example. So those are just a couple of the technical things. What I really wanna focus on is the marketing aspect because your website is your online front door. And as consumers today, we're all researchers. We wanna be able to find everything about you online and interact with you, even if ultimately we're gonna go visit you locally in person. So it's really important that you integrate your online presence with your real life presence. And for many businesses, the way that you get more customers and repeat business is by building relationships with those customers. And so what I want you to think about in terms of your marketing to a broader audience online is that your marketing is about building relationships with more people at one time. So I often hear from people though that I don't have a lot of time to create content. I don't know what to say. I've tried all these different things and nothing is working for me. 
And that's because you're probably doing what I like to call random acts of marketing, okay? Just say no to these. Random acts of marketing at best are gonna give you random results. You really have to have a plan. So what I'm gonna to do today is go through a bunch of different elements that will make your website more effective in getting you more clients and better leads and more revenue. So some of these, like I say, you may have them covered and some of them you don't. And uh, let's talk about a few of those. My slides are advancing on their own here. So the first thing that I want you to think about is what is the business that you want more of? You want to focus your efforts there because you might do a whole lot of different services or products. Uh, you may only do one thing, but you might have certain customers that you rather work with. This is where a majority of your effort on your website, your search engine optimization, and your content should be focused. It's very important to know that, you know, you don't have to put everything out there about your business. This is your business. You are deciding the trajectory of it, where you want to go. So you are free to edit your messaging to fit the business that you want to attract. You can mention other services or leave them out entirely. It's perfectly okay. It's kind of like when I tell people like your LinkedIn as a business person is not a resume. Edit out anything that's not relevant. This, this is not your job interview. This is a, a vehicle to help present what type of business you want more of. And your website is the same. So for example, our marketing services clients, sometimes we'll do occasionally a print ad or some other printed material for them, but I don't mention that anywhere on our site and I really don't want more of that type of business. As a matter of fact, if uh, you are our client and you have a large amount of that business, I'm recommending to someone else that they do the print stuff for you. Just because we might do it doesn't mean we want to attract more of it. And so think about that with your business. And as part of that, just like you don't want to focus your marketing on all parts of your business as opposed to the business you want to grow, not everyone is your customer. So, you know, we often talk about getting better leads. And we had a client that we started working with and we had changed around a bunch of their messaging and their content. And believe it or not, the result was they started getting significantly less calls. However, at the end of the day, the total number of new clients they got and the amount of revenue they got actually increased on that reduced number of calls. So not only did they get more business, but they saved a bunch of time by not talking to people who were never going to be their customer anyway, because it wasn't the right fit. And that's what this chart illustrates. I like this gear uh, metaphor, if you will, because you can see if one of them is out of alignment, it's just not gonna work as good as it is. So your audience is who is your ideal client? Not everyone is your client. And when you try to talk to everyone, you end up talking to no one. I was just talking to a potential client right before I got on the call here. And she's like, well, my area, it's a niche of a niche of a niche. It's a really targeted process. I'm like, that makes your marketing so much easier because we are so good at tuning out anything we feel like is not relevant to us. We only pay attention to what resonates with us. So your message has to resonate with your audience. What problems do they have? How are you addressing these problems? And then your product or your service has to fit that message. So all of these things really need to work together. And this is the core of what it is. You know, If your message doesn't speak directly to your audience, they're going to ignore it. If your product or service doesn't solve the problem of the audience that you have attracted, either you've got the wrong audience or you've got the wrong product. If your message doesn't match your offering, but the message resonates, 
people are not going to buy. So this is a super important write it down point because everything on your website should be designed and worded from the point of view of what your ideal client needs. And that means not how you organize your business. So let me give you an example that we've seen. The company sells cookware and they represent several different manufacturers. So they stock, they get pricing, they store inventory, buy the manufacturer, they deal with it. That's how they're thinking about their product lines and everything they want to do. And that isn't, though, the best way to organize and present what they do on their website. Some consumers might shop by looking for a particular brand, but most of their clients are looking for something very specific. So if I need a new roasting pan and you make me search eight different manufacturers sections of the website to see who has roasting pans, what the price is, and if it's in stock, I'm probably going to go to another site where the search is more convenient. And this is what I mean by thinking about it, turning it around and pretend that you are a customer in your business. Right away, your homepage and the information should be very clear that this is for you if know who your client is, know what their problems and desires are, and know your value, how you solve their problem or meet their desire. That should be right up at the top of the page. The client you want more of, who is that client? Think about your current clients. And then sometimes it's a lot easier to think about, I don't want to work with this kind of client. Well, you know, put your messaging in there that discourages them. You don't need to talk to people that you don't want to work with. So right at the top of the page. So I went and um, took a look at the cadence right at the top of the page for an example of this, and I thought they actually did a really great job. It is very clear what cadence does and who it is for. You know, we it, it's about what they can do for me. It's gonna allow me to create beautiful websites. I want a beautiful website. It's gonna be easy. Yes, I want it to be easy. Oh, I'm going to be able to do it quickly. Yes, I want quickly as well. Oh, and there's templates and I could edit it. And there's new pages that like a library of things. This sounds like something that I want. So right away, they know that. So I have a mentor who says, and I don't even know if it's her own saying or if she got it for somewhere else, but it's better to be clear than clever. Sometimes we see you know, the homepage is trying to be all, oh, here's like a, there's, there's mountains and, and people camping and it's, it, you know, there's a beautiful, like esoteric, get, get what, what you want in life. And like you, you like scroll down the page at the very bottom and you find out they're an accounting firm. Well, you know, it, it has to be clear. Clever is okay. Clear is much, much better. Plus it's easier to do clear, right? So Here's an action item for you. What do people see when they first come to your website? Are you speaking directly to the business that you want, the client that you want, and the problems they have and how you solve them? So take a look at that and uh, see if you can't figure that, right? So here's something else that should be on your site. Where's the proof? How do they know it works? You know, you should have testimonials, reviews, data to back up because your audience wants to know, are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Do you do what you say? And so this is a must have on your website. Now, personally, I like to see you sprinkle your reviews and testimonials throughout the site. If I'm reading about a particular product or service and then like there's a call out box, a nice call out box right in the middle of that that has a testimonial for that service, that is much more impactful than having a separate testimonials page off somewhere. People don't go to those as often and there's no context for it. So it's much better, and you don't know which pages they're going to come see. Maybe I just came in and saw a great blog article that you've written. 
uh, or I'm just on your homepage. So rather than having a page called testimonials, and because when we look at the analytics, we don't see as many people going and seeing to those pages. The other thing that you want to do is, are they up to date? This is an area where good systems come into play. You know, as part of the daily interactions you do with clients, is there a process on follow-up and asking for the review? Sometimes people, you know, come to us and they go, we just got like 15 great reviews and Google is not showing them. Well, because you haven't posted a review in two years and now you've posted 15 of them and you probably won't get around to this again for another six months, Google assumes you've bought those consistent things over time and updating your website with a little bit of consistency over time even if your core messaging hasn't changed is good too it it's a signal to google that hey these people are still around in business they're doing stuff there's nothing worse than going to a website and finding like the latest thing on there is an event from 2019 it's on it you have to question especially post pandemic are they still around so have a process in place for a lot of this stuff is going to make it easier for you, but reviews is one area and it's important to cover that. The other thing that's really important is what do you want me to do next? Too often we see that people expect the user or the visitor to the website to figure out what the next steps are. Again, don't assume that people will figure it out. You know, one of the mistakes we see that people make with um, using Google Ads is they write a very specific ad for certain keywords and they've got a very specific problem they're solving or product they're pitching. But then the ad directs them to the homepage of the website where there's 10 other things, the offer in the ad isn't there. And, you know, we don't have time to figure that out. You're going to make us hunt and paste. Make it easy for your uh, viewers to know what you want them to do. It's also a good idea to set expectations for how people work with you. What does the process look like? Because we're all researchers now. We just want to know everything before we call someone, before we contact them. I've seen some stats that says people are 80% through the buying process before they will actually contact someone because they're considering and researching. And we'll talk a little bit more about the buyer's process uh, journey in a little bit. So, what do you want me to do next? I am going to recommend to you that you put an uh, increased emphasis on building your list and getting the data, especially with the um, all the data privacy things, tracking cookies in Google in theory are going away. First party data is more important than ever. First party data is people that you can contact on your terms. And so, you can get different types of traffic to your website. You can get paid traffic, which paid traffic can work really, really well. When you stop paying, the traffic stops coming though. You can get organic traffic because you've got a great ranking blog post or you know, you're coming up in search for your area for what you do. You can get social traffic from social media. But your goal on the website should be to convert that traffic into own traffic, which typically today is an email address that you can contact those people on a regular basis to nurture them along the way. Not everybody is ready to buy immediately. You might not have the situation where you have, uh, you know, like people come to your site, they add to cart, they buy. Typically, you need to have the building know, like, and trust, and you don't want to rely on them randomly coming back to your website again. You want to, you know, have them sign up for something and, you know, get something from you so that you can regularly have communications with them to build that know, like, and trust so that they do ultimately buy. There is a saying, the money is in the list, right? Now, 
Many people think, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. I don't have time to figure it out. You know, if I were to call you or visit your store and, or start asking questions about your product or service, not in a million years are you going to respond to me, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you because I don't have content. You have content. You have content that you are using every single day, right? What are you already telling people? I love the three times rule. If you have found yourself telling you, telling of the same story or providing the same information to three or more people, that is content for your website because there's a wider audience that is interested in that information. If you have certain stories you use that try to help build relationships about you know, how you work or what you do or, or the, the particulars about your product and stuff that when you tell people like their eyes light up, you should be telling the world about that on your website and using that same content there. So you want to make it a part of your processes, right? Do you have a team meeting? Hey, what questions are we getting all the time this week? You know, I'll give you an example with something that we do in uh, WordPress. So we, we have clients and somebody may call us and say, you know, I, I forget how to add something to the menu. I haven't done that in a long time. Well, you know, someone's going to make them a really quick video on how to do it. And we're going to send them that and so they can replay it and they see it and it's a minute long. It's not something that's that's a big thing. Uh, but we're going to put that on our website then because other people are going to find it. It's going to go on our YouTube channel. And then when somebody calls later with the same question, we have a ready-made link. So it's actually helping us in customer service. Oh yeah, here, here's exactly what you need to do. Here is the information. So what are you already doing? What are the questions people are already asking you? This is core strategic content for you. And this is the type of information which is going to attract customers to your website and also give your current customers a better experience. So, there's some other really simple basics that you ought to be covering, and that is make it easy to do business with you. We love convenience today. We want to do everything online. If it's 10 o'clock at night and I want to do something, I don't want to have to like, oh, I have to call them tomorrow during business hours. I'm busy. I want to get what I want right now. When we do call, we want phone numbers on mobile to be clickable. You want to make sure that you have your hours and they're up to date. You want maps if you have an in-person business. Can I schedule an appointment with you? I love the person that cuts my hair. It drives me insane that I cannot schedule that appointment online because I'll be thinking about it on a Monday night at 10 o'clock and they're not open. And leaving a message means back and forth on calling, like make it easier. I have been seeing her for years and years and years. And so that's why I'm loyal. But as if I was looking for a new person, like a new customer, I would go somewhere else where I could do it more conveniently. Do you have forms that people can fill out? Can people order online? Even if they maybe pick up locally in store, all of these things, take a look at your website. Pretend you are a customer. You know the process people go through when they buy from you. How, especially look at it on the phone. How easy is it to do business with you? So that's an uh, important one right there and a number of things that you can check. Now, we want you to measure it because you need to do more of what is working. Now, you don't have to be an expert in all of these things, but you should know enough to evaluate whether or not it's working and to know what you're looking at, especially if you're gonna hire this out to something. You know, I've had people come to me in the past and say, you know, I'm spending, you know, $2,000 a month on SEO right now. And so in my conversation with them, I'm like, oh, great, is it working? I don't know. Like, well, what do you mean you don't know? Well, they kind of send a report every month, but I don't understand when anything's on it. And I don't really know if I'm getting more business to it. And I'm thinking that's 
Why are you investing that money if you don't know the return? Investing in marketing can be wonderful. It can 10x your return on what you've spent in terms of the business, but you have to be able to measure it. And so some of the basic things that you can look at for measuring are to make sure that you set your site up with Google Analytics. So you're seeing you know, how much traffic you're coming to the site, which pages people are going to. Uh, Google Search Console is going to tell you what is indexed, uh, you know, what queries people are doing to come to your site. Um, it's always funny to see how people are sometimes surprised at what Google thinks their site is about, right? So, you know, if it's not what you think it should be about, that's a signal to you that your content is not the right content because Google can't figure out what the right content is. They're picking some random thing off of your site. You know, we had uh, a, a travel agent we worked with for a while who's like, number one thing was like candles that smell like Disney. It's kind of like, okay, that's really nothing to what we do. And it wasn't bringing in any business at all related to travel, but that's the thing because the, the, the other types of content weren't there on the site. That's what was happening. So, um, track how many, you know, form submissions, how many calls are you getting? Are, are you growing your list? You know, and, and if you're emailing your list are people uh, engaging with it or are they unsubscribing? Um, if you're running a campaign on tracking very carefully, like on, if it's an ad campaign, you know, wh where are people falling off? Um, I caught a little bit of the the funnel presentation that, that Maestro is doing, you know, you've got every single piece that funnel can be optimized so that you can figure out where can we improve. So it's an iterative process that you want to improve over time. But if you're not measuring the things that you're trying to improve, how will you know if it's working? So now in all of my time, uh, working with clients to get them, the ones who have the best results and what we have found again and again and again is that consistency builds traction. So you have to get a plan on the calendar. You have to understand, you know, I've talked about a lot of different things to look at and you go, oh my God, we need like, you know, 10 new pages of content on our services because they're not right, okay? You can't wait to do them or you can't make it such a big job that 10 have to be done all at one time. If you think that all I can do is maybe focus on optimizing one page per month or one article of frequently asked questions per month, you know, at the end of the year, you're going to have 12 new pages of good core strategic content and, and do it that way. So I can't emphasize enough that with your updating of the website, with your emailing people, with your getting review, everything is consistency and making it a part of your regular processes. Because if at the end of the day, you say, I'm gonna get to marketing later, or I'm gonna treat my website and my email list and my social media all as separate silos, you're not going to have enough time you've got a business to run so that is not all about this. So, you know, it seems like a lot, but my other favorite thing is that you have to actually take action, but there is this importance of small steps. I'm not sure, someone had sent me this graphic a long time ago. I use it all the time because I just love it. The one guy with the little steps is up at the top of the clouds, reaching all of his goals, and the other person is still standing at the bottom thing. this is too big, I can't do it. You just want to start somewhere, you can do it. And so I have a couple of take action steps that I think would be good for you to take as a result of this because it's all wonderful to learn about this stuff but i actually want you to implement it so that you get some results and can start growing your business so a couple of things um, first off the distance between goals and uh 
and reality is called action, right? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, James Clear on Atomic Havocs. One of the things that he said uh, in that book that has always struck with me is that the you know that winners and losers oftentimes have the same goals. What's the difference? It's what they do. So, what are a couple of quick actions that you can do? And um, first one would be first impressions. Take a look at your homepage. Are you really talking about the people who? Uh, are your ideal client and how you help them. Does As soon as they come to that site, do they go, oh, this is me. That's what you want. And then what about you? So especially for small businesses, you know, people like to do business with people. And one of the things we've seen in analytics time and time again is that after the homepage, the most often visited pages for many people is their about page or their team page. I want to know who's behind all this. So take a fresh look at that and take a fresh look at it, not as, oh, this is my resume, through the eyes of what you do for those ideal clients and how you help them get to their goals, solve their problems, or reach their desires. Uh, the other thing you should do is a content audit, taking a look at, you know, what it is that you have on your site that answers those questions you have all the time. And I want you to think about something called the buyer's journey. I thought I had a slide on that and apparently I do not, or maybe it's hidden in my presentation. I don't know. <laughs> at this point, but the buyer's journey is the process that we all go through when we figure out, oh, I want to do something or, oh, I got to solve this problem. We start doing a bunch of research. Do other people have this problem? What are, what are the different uh, ways to solve this problem? How can I do this? Um, then they start like doing considerations. Well, who does this? What are the different options? How much does it cost? Who do I go to? And then they start to evaluate, well, who should I go to? That's decision time. And then you have the experience of buying itself. Again, how easy are you making it for someone to do business with you? Or are they hitting the back button and finding someone else that's more convenient? So think about the process your buyers go through because there's content they're looking for at each of these stages and even after the sale right, for support. What content do you have in each of those? Get on a calendar, identify what's missing that will resonate because, and you'll know it's resonate because you've told that story three or more times or you've answered that question a bunch of times already and get it there. The other thing is about getting names. Are you building your list? Is that a prominent thing on your website? Did you have some sort of a lead magnet that somebody could, could do or a coupon or you know a form to call me right now? Can I schedule that appointment online? And then to have a plan because you've identified a bunch of stuff to get this updated. And so um, one of the things that um, I do have for you, if you are interested in, in uh, downloading this, is it's your quick steps to creating content that gets clients. It's how to create this plan and to actually get a process going that is manageable that will create your business. And um, I will put that in the Cadence uh, Facebook group as well. But... Um, and then there is my contact information if um, anyone is interested in and has any uh, questions. I think that's my presentation at this point, Hannah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Donna. That was amazing. Honestly, I, I want everybody to listen to that. There were so many powerful tools and I can't tell you, I've done support for a lot, a long time. And I can't tell you how many times I just wish I had a resource like your presentation and just be like, here, just listen to this and actually do what she says. So there's a lot funny. in there, but like, and again, don't get overwhelmed yeah, by it, but you totally. know, you may be like, oh, I'm doing this, but wait, I should be doing this too. I mean, we've just found mm -hmm. over and over again, there are certain things that work and 
that yeah. fresh eyes looking at it like your customer is the biggest thing. Sometimes it's hard to, to turn around and get out of our own heads in our business, but. That's so true. Yeah. But I love your small steps analogy. That's so great. Yeah. Because it does. It can feel daunting to have to take these massive leaps, but when it's small steps, it's like, okay. Right. I was in a call yesterday and, um, I, I think we were using Canva. Canva, when you're saving or something, like if someone was screen sharing, puts up like a little proverb, like a little quote or something. And uh -huh. uh, there was there was four of us on the call and the quote, we all remarked on the quote that come up and it was like, do not be afraid of going slow. Be afraid huh. of standing still. That's good. I love that. That's a perfect, seems like a perfect quote to conclude on today. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us, Donna. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat right now, but if you want to reach out to Donna, her, let me pull her um, contact back up here. There's her info. And then you can also find her in the Cadence Community Facebook group. So yeah, Donna, thank you so much. Um, next up me. on the hour, we have Jake Fold joining us. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, Jake Fold will be here at nine. What is her website? It's there. <laughs> Somebody asked where her website was, but it's listed right there, dailysync.com. Um, so yeah, grab another cup of coffee and we will see you um, at the next hour. Donna, thank you so much. Thank you. It's great being here.